Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Justin Peralt, and today I'm going to tell you about my sea turtle research. I am currently working as a postdoctoral research fellow at Moat Marine Laboratory in Sarasota, Florida, in both the Marine Immunology Program and the Sea Turtle Conservation and Research Program. Last year, I finished my doctoral degree at Florida Atlantic University, where I conducted research on marine turtles in the effects of pollution on their health and reproduction. I have continued my research here at Mount Marine Laboratory working with the endangered leatherback and loggerhead sea turtles. Here you can see a picture of one of our satellite tagged loggerhead turtles, Matilda. She is four and a half feet long, weighs around 300 pounds, and spends her time foraging off of the Yucatan Peninsula when she is not laying her eggs here on Sarasota's beaches. You can see in this picture that we use red lights while working with marine turtles. This is because red light is much dimmer than white light, which can confuse the turtles, causing them to crawl to the source of the light instead of back to the ocean. What I'm trying to discover is why some turtles have nests that produce more hatchlings than others. You can see here a picture of a nest that has hatched. We dig up nests three days after the turtles have emerged to do nest inventories and calculate hatching success. An unhatched egg retains its spherical shape, while with a hatched egg only the shell remains. Now a leatherback turtle typically lays 80 eggs in one nest and only about 50% of those eggs will hatch. The loggerhead turtles, on the other hand, lay around 100 to 120 eggs per nest, and about 80% of those eggs will hatch. Marine turtles tend to lay around six nests per season on average, which equals around 500 to 700 eggs in one year, depending on the species. Why these large differences in hatch success rates between leatherback turtles and loggerhead turtles occur is unknown, but I believe that it may have something to do with pollution. A female turtle that ingests pollution from an oil spill, for example, will pass on those chemicals to her eggs, which can negatively affect the nest. Therefore, a turtle that has been exposed to more pollution may produce fewer hatchlings than one that has not been exposed. You can all do your part to help protect sea turtles by throwing away your trash or by picking up any litter you may see on the beach. Sea turtles often confuse floating garbage for their prey items and will ingest it, which can make them very sick. So please do your part to help marine turtles survive for a very long time so that it will keep them both happy and healthy.